इस ब्लूमबर्ग यू टीवी Seven billion dollar deal that finally gets the phone line through from India to Africa. When Sunil Mittal's Bharti took over Zen's Africa assets spread across 15 countries, the deal not only made Bharti the seventh largest global mobile company with a subscriber base of 171 million and yearly revenues of 11.67 billion dollars. but also the deal became india's biggest investment in africa taking the total investment in the continent to 16.7 billion dollars in the first half of 2009 indian investment into africa was around 451 million dollars a huge surge of more than 463% compared to 80 million dollars that poured into africa from india in the first half of 2008 but this is a trifle compared to the indian government's target of around 74 billion dollars in bilateral trade in the next 5 years this month a 3 day india africa conclave in new delhi attracted 145 companies discussing business of around 12 billion dollars At the moment the Tata Group has 1.6 billion dollars in Africa investment spread across automobiles, telecom, hotels and mining. Tata's investments have even coined the term Tatafication of Africa, topped recently with the opening of the luxurious Taj Cape Town. Other Indian companies keen on Africa include Videocon, Suzlon, Gotrej, Mahindra and Mahindra, UB Group, Sipla, Dr Reddy's Labs, NIIT, Kirloshkar and SR. Indian oil companies have deals in Sudan, Kenya, Libya and Nigeria and FMCG firms like Gotrej, Marico and Dabur are looking at the vast African population. This week the man in charge of India's eye on Africa focus speaks to me on why Africa is so important. He is Minister of External Affairs Shashi Tharoor. He's here to talk about the importance of trade with Africa and how the government can help. This is Talk Back I'm Hindol Sen Gupta delighted to welcome on the show once again Minister for External Affairs Shashi Tharoor. He's here to talk about the big opportunity opening up for India Inc in south south cooperation not just in africa but also in latin america and of course where we stand at the moment in pakistan and afghanistan minister thanks very much indeed for being on the show let me begin by asking you you have a big india africa conclave happening essentially as india looks to sort of you 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 you've been somebody who's consistently talked about the soft power of india uh, and pushing forward the trade agenda in dealing with several countries when you look ahead in the next decade what kind of uh, initiatives in this soft power genre especially in the context of trade do you see happening you know this goes beyond soft power soft power is the things that are attractive in a society including culture and and so on but as trade is in fact um, a core activity of any government and we're doing that uh, beyond considerations of soft power if you look at africa we've gone uh, in this decade from a 3 billion dollar trade level with africa to 37 billion dollars last year and over the next decade i would like to see that double there's no question that's a major priority for us this is an annual conclave we're doing with the confederation of indian industry the exim bank and the support of the ministry of external affairs but what's striking is we have a large number 17 foreign ministers here as well as well as of course foreign trade ministers a vice president a prime minister i had dinner yesterday with the prime minister of togo there's a lot going on here and we are trying to cultivate bilateral relationships with african countries both one on one as it were one country to another india with say togo while at the same time try to improve the overall continent wide relationship india's presence in africa which goes back to our long uh, solidarity with africa throughout the period of colonization the period of struggle against apartheid all of that that solidarity is now translating itself also into trade and investment in real terms 
uh, between our two countries. Essentially, we've heard it so much about South-South cooperation and so on and so forth. Uh, when you talk about interconnectivity between Africa and India, in real terms, you know, we've had this entire Bharti MTN deal. Uh, and for India Inc., some of these things remain a concern, right? Um, because uh, you want to trade with Africa, you're not entirely sure how far the legislation in the countries that you want to trade with Africa allow you to bring about the right sort of synergies. How do you address such concerns at a governmental level and at an India Inc. level? How do you address such concerns? Well, India Inc. knows, I believe, that this government is sympathetic to its aspirations. Certainly when something like the... Um, Bharti initiative in Africa, or the earlier attempt in South Africa with MTNL. When all of these things come up, the government is sympathetic. Certainly, our high commissions and embassies are routinely instructed to be supportive of Indian business. And when I go on official trips, for example, to African countries, I take a business delegation with me. I'm not there to make business for them, but I'm there to say to the African governments, look, our private sector can play a role in your development. You decide what you want, you decide who you want, you decide whom you have a relationship with, but they're here with me. If you'd like to meet them, here they are. That's the sort of approach. Now, with the Bharti uh, uh, move, we've said to our um, high commissions and embassies in the countries concerned, try and be helpful as appropriate. Well, what does it really mean? When you say try and be helpful, in real terms on the ground, what does it mean? Well, it can mean anything from facilitating appointments. Let's say a regulator or a minister or a political authority has to take a decision and it's not that easy for a private operator from a foreign country to get an appointment. I see no harm in our high commission or embassy saying, this is a reputable person from our country, would you please grant an appointment? And that sort of thing a government should do and an embassy should do. But it can go from something as simple and straightforward as that to actually facilitating an understanding of the legislative environment, discussing the legislative climate in that particular country, educating our people as to what uh, uh, can and cannot be done in a particular country, to be a sort of, if you like, uh, an advisor and a guide. As I say, we have to walk a very clear line between not taking any commercially inappropriate steps, because the government of India is not in the business of facilitating profits for any particular company. We will extend to Bharti the same consideration that we will extend tomorrow to a rival company that may come and also want to buy an African uh, enterprise. But our point is we want India, and India Inc., as you put it, to be present and visible and successful uh, in foreign countries and certainly on African soil. So I have absolutely no compunctions in being, when I meet a president or prime minister or a minister, saying, by the way, so-and-so, a reputable industrialist from India is here, or a business person or whatever, please do meet them. By the way, this is not unusual. Our, our commerce minister does similar things. Our prime minister on occasion, when he went to Saudi Arabia, had a big business delegation with him. This is all part of what makes our approach what it is. We're not going into Africa with a heavy governmental footprint alone. We're also working very much with our, uh, with our private sector. What in your mind is the real opportunity and the quantum of opportunity in Africa? It's, un it's unlimited, literally. I mean, the potential is huge at all levels. There is the classic trade, the buying and selling of goods and services. There is investment possibility. And you're quite right in mentioning agriculture as one. Well. <laughs>